Hello, this is Jared from Commit Quality, and in this video, we're going to go over using run settings in Playwright and Unit. So, in my previous videos, we haven't actually done anything with run settings. We've just run everything out of the box, we've not changed any kind of global values. So, today, I want to show you how to do this, and it should be quite quick and straightforward as well. I'm going to go to the right when I have my project of commit quality practice. I'm going to right click, go to add a new item, and I'm going to add a run settings file. So I'm going to say example dot run settings. You can name this whatever you want, and I'm going to click add. Here, I'm just going to delete everything. I'm actually going to go to Playwright's documentation because they already define run settings here for us. And they state when running tests from Visual Studio, you can take advantage of run settings. And the following shows a reference to the supported values. So I'm actually going to copy everything from this. I'll put a link to this in the description as well. And then I paste it here, hit save. Close it and reopen it just so the XML formatting takes effect for me. But the reason why we want to use these kind of run settings is so we can change environments or maybe change our browsers we're using. So we'll break this down in a minute. But what I'm saying is you might have test environments where you go to your test website and then your live website and you can control all of this using run settings. But you can also control if you want to point to Chromium or Firefox or WebKit. So let's just break this down quickly then. So because it's n unit, we have number of test workers here. So this works with your parallelization. So you can change this to whatever you want. They've hard coded to 24. So I'll just keep that for now. We then have the run configuration where we set in a bunch of environment variables. By default, Playwright have stated to add the debug one, which would be Playwright uh, API debug. And they've recommended it here to set it so we'll just keep that the same for now we'll go on we'll touch on debugging in a future video then we have this playwright object and in here is where you can change a bunch of things so by default you've got the browser name you can set this to chromium firefox webkit these are the browsers that come out of the box with playwright i'll just keep it to chromium for now we also have the expect timeout which is the timeout for your web first assertions so i'll touch on this in my assertions in detail video however by default we are saying we want each web first assertion to have a max timeout of 5000 so if it hasn't succeeded by this timeout that's when it fails so you could change this globally for all of your your assertions we then have launch options for this it's got headless equals false so you're going to see a headed browser and then you've got channels and by default they've set the channel to ms edge and i'm guessing this is just an example but basically what channels are it allows playwright to operate against the kind of branded google chrome or the branded microsoft edge browsers which are available on your local machine so if i was using version I don't know, 109 of Chrome on my machine, and I set this to Chrome, that's what version Playwright is going to test against. Same with MS Edge, it'd use whatever I have on my machine. Now, it is worth noting that Playwright doesn't install these browsers by default for you. The only ones they give you is Chromium, WebKit, and Firefox, which is set in here rather than in the channels. The values you can set for channels would be Chrome, MS Edge, Chrome Beta, MS Edge Beta, or MS Edge Dev. So you can test against the Beta and Dev versions as well, which is really useful to know. And that's kind of the breakdown of this. There's not much going on in there. I'm really hoping the Playwright will add like a default timeout variable, which acts like what your web first decision would, but more for the actions. By default, they set to 30,000, or you can override them via the methods themselves when you call them. But it'd be really good to have that set in here, like we have with the kind of Node.js version. So we've defined the run settings, we've walked through them. However, we're not actually using them at the moment. Just because I created in here doesn't mean they are automatically picked up unless we tell it to. And that's for a good reason, because you're probably going to have a bunch of these different ones you might have chromium.run settings, msedge.run settings, firefox.run settings, and whatever else you want, or different test environments. So we have to tell VS Code to use this as well. And there's a couple of ways to do this, one via Visual Studio and one via uh, the command line. So let's go from Visual Studio first, which is the nice UI approach. If you go to test and you go to configure run settings, you can select solution wide run settings file, and then you can select the run settings you want to use. So in this case, it's example run settings. So if I now run this test, 
it's actually loaded in headed mode. It went very quick, but it loaded MS Edge in headed mode. If I wanted to use the basic Chromium and not use a channel, I can literally delete this, rerun the test, and this will now use Chromium out of the box, which you see in here. Same again, you can change it to say Firefox, hit save, we can run it, and that will work. And it's picked it up because we've said to use this run settings file. There we are, it's loaded up and it's done because it's just a very simple test. I should also state you can do it from your test explorer as well. So you can actually click the the little arrows here, click down and say configure run settings and you can choose what you want again. So we already have it selected, but you can choose it from here. If, you, if, you, if you're running on a build server, you're not going to be using this inside Visual Studio. So it's always good to know how to do this from directly within command line. So let's open up the PowerShell script. By default, we can say .NET test. We saw this on the first video, and this just executes all of our tests, but this, this isn't using a run settings file. And the reason I can tell this is because by default, it's headless and nothing popped up and the test worked without me seeing any browser on the screen. It'd be using Chromium as well, as they are the default values, and that's not what I have set in here. So... To do this, we can say .NET test, and we can say dash dash settings. Then we take the file of the run settings. So I'm going to say rename, and I'll copy and paste because I'm prone to making typos. Now if I hit enter, what I'll see is Firefox should load, and the test should run in that using those run settings. And you can see here, all popped up. You can even see the debug output happening here because this is what Playwright has said to use inside our environment variables. We set debug to PW API, so we gain all these extra extra logs as well, which comes in really handy. As you can imagine, if you wanted to run different run settings, if I had, say, a Firefox and Chromium, I could do the same, but I changed this to whatever the Chromium one was. So if I said Chromium, then that would run the Chromium version, but of course I don't have another run set in set. But that's how you can kind of change between them. As a little thank you for watching the video as well, I want to give you a little bit more than just what came out of the box of Playwright. I want to show you how you can set your environment variables and use them inside your tests, and also how you can use NUnit's test run parameters, which means we can access a bunch of parameters, we can set whatever we want to set inside our run settings and use them in our tests. So for example, if you had two run settings, you'd have a test and a production version. I'll show you can set these different ones. So first of all, let's do it via environment variables. We already have an example here for debug, but what I can actually say is let's add another one and we'll name it. Uh, let's just name it subscribe. And we'll name the value subscribe to me in the channel in as the value of this. Now I can actually get this directly inside my test. If I go to my example test and we'll just put it underneath the go to, what I can actually do is a bit of C sharp environment magic, what I can say var env variable. So I'm just setting a variable, you can name this whatever you want. And I'm gonna say environment dot get environment variable. And this is whatever the environment variable was. So in our case, it was subscribe in all capitals. Save that. And what I'll do is let's just add a breakpoint here and we'll debug the test. So let's say debug. And what I'm expecting now is when I hover over an environment variable, this will have the value of subscribe to me. And then obviously you could use this whatever you wanted inside your test. So there we are, we've got the variable and it's got the value of subscribe to me. And that's one way of accessing your environment variables that we set inside our, inside our run settings. And to be honest, you could set this outside your run set and still have access to it. All we do in this case is get in a specific environment variable. However, there is another approach you can use, which you can see directly inside the NUnit documentation, and that's by setting test run parameters. So underneath Playwright, I'm going to create a new property, and it's going to be called test run parameters. Now it has to be named this as well because this is something out of the box with any unit and I'm going to set a new parameter. So I can say parameter name equals, uh, what should we name it? We'll name it 
commit quality. And then I'm also going to say the value of this will equal subscribe. Let's close this off. And now what we've done is we've created specific test run parameters. So maybe a better example would be base URL and you could have your test environment and then you could in one in one run sentence file and then you could have another run settings, which is your live, which would have the parameter name of base URL, but this would be your production environment. So as you can see, this is how you'd use it in kind of real world applications. But then what we can do, we can have access to these parameters inside our tests using something called the test context. So what we'll do, we'll say var test param. Once again, you can name that whatever you want. And I'm going to say test context dot parameters. And then we basically say what the parameter name was. So in our case, it was commit quality. So hit save on that. We'll put the breakpoint back down here and we'll debug. So what we're expecting now, when we hover over test parameter, we should have the value of subscribe right there. Here we go. So we've got ENV, which is exactly the same subscribe to me because we didn't get rid of it. But now in our test parameter, we can see the value of subscribe. So we can start using what we want. So if you wanted to go to a specific URL here where we have the go to command, we, we can do that via test parameters and it's making everything dynamic rather than having to hard code whatever we want. If we had commit quality, which went to playwright dev, we could then say maybe google.com is a different one, or we could use the test environment, which is probably a better example. And that's kind of all I wanted to show. I wanted to add those parameters and the environment variables into this, because I think it's something that most people will want to be doing. And it's a way how you're going to differentiate between your run set, it's between test environments and production environments and how you can do it inside your tests. So it makes your life a lot easier. Maybe you could have a go at, say, pointing to Playwright here using a test parameter and then setting up another run settings file and pointing to, say, Google. Of course, your test is going to fail, but it'll just show you how it kind of works. As always, if you do have any questions, please drop them down below. A like and subscribe is appreciated. And thank you for watching.